Hey, welcome to another episode of Building a SaaS, where we are going to sit down together and build a software as a service using the software as a service starter kit called Wave. And Wave is open source, so you can feel free to download this and use it in your own projects. It has a bunch of features like authentication, billing, subscriptions, and just a bunch of things are, that are the key building blocks for every software as a service. So that's what we're using to build a fancy bar. And a fancy bar is a service where a user can add a fancy bar or notification pop-up to their website. So we're going to create all these different designs for these pop-ups and little floating bars that people can add to their website. And we're also going to have a little funnel and we're going to do billing. And we're basically going to build the whole thing out um, just within a half an hour a day. So I'm going to go ahead and start my timer just so we don't go over a half hour. So last time we left off, we were creating a bunch of these different bars. So we created this, it was a product hunt, like notification bar down here and one at the top. And I was trying to think about the best way to embed these on other people's site. So when they add a JavaScript snippet, I probably want to inject some HTML into their, into their website, but I probably don't want to inject it directly into the HTML because I don't know if I'll have conflicting classes or if there's additional JavaScript. I want to make sure that I'm very careful with that because the worst thing would be to do is to create a service that somebody adds their, your JavaScript embed and it actually messes up functionality. So I decided to look at Intercom is a service that they offer like these really cool tools. Um, as I scroll down, you'll probably see this pop up. Actually, maybe I can go to pricing. Yeah, so they have like this kind of like pop up that comes up and it's basically just a service like or a bot that people can you know ask the people who own the website questions and it also works as like support so I, was, I wanted to see exactly how they do it so check this out if we open this up and i inspect this element it looks like they are actually injecting an iframe so that's kind of cool because we can isolate the bar and the functionality of the bar into an iframe we don't have to worry about conflicting with any of the page JavaScript or a bunch of other stuff. So I think that's how we're going to build it. And it looks like that we can actually still interact with the web page. And then the iframe will basically just sit there by itself until it's closed. I'm guessing maybe the iframe gets removed or uh, something else happens from there. But that's how we're going to implement the fancy bars on the fancy bar website. So I think the next step that I actually want to do is I want to basically show each of these bars like if I'm going to show them in a demo. So I'm going to create a separate page that I can just go to maybe like fancybar.test slash example or maybe slash bar and then we'll pass the number and that will load up the specific bar that we want to load. So I'm going to go ahead and just create that view. I need to go into my project. And again, I'm just going to close all of these windows. Close and close. So first, I probably want to add a route. So I'm going to say that I want this route get, and this is going to be, maybe I could call it bar slash one. And I usually like to do this, just echo hello, just to make sure that we are hitting that route. So I will say bar slash one. And sure enough, we get that route. Okay. So now I actually want this specific get to go to a controller. And I think I'll probably just call this a bar controller. So let's say PHP artisan make controller bar controller. And now if I go into my app, HTTP controllers, we should now have this bar controller. So I'm going to say public function show and I probably want to pass it um, I could say like the ID or maybe it would be like the bar um, but it's actually just going to reference a specific file and this is actually where maybe I want to store these in a database so if I go into my tall stack theme we have the different bars so we have bar 0102 and maybe I actually want to store these in a config and then I can reference the config that then references a bar. 
This way I can name these whatever I want. And then as long as I reference the config, maybe we call it bars, then I know I can just change up where the location of this bar is supposed to be. So let's go ahead and create a new file and call this bars.php. And we'll see how one of these look. Yeah, so it just returns an array. And we can do that here. And so I could number these or I could letter these. I mean, it really, I guess it doesn't make a difference as long as I keep it consistent. So I could even say 001. And this is possibly thinking that I could have hundreds of bars. So maybe that's a good way to start off. So I know that this is going to reference, we'll say the theme bars and 01.blade. Actually, we don't even need that blade.php. So this is just going to reference the view specifically that we want to load or the partial. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. And this could get kind of confusing because then we're going to refer to this as six. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe I actually want to, you know, just even though this is a different bottom right bar, maybe I still want to keep this in the same. Yeah. Just for organization purposes, I'm just going to keep this in the bars folder. Oh, don't want to cancel that. Uh, need to rename this to zero six. So we'll move that and I'm just going to delete this. And maybe inside of the config, I could even have, uh, you know, a bunch of different options. Like maybe I could describe the bar a little bit. So that might actually be helpful. So maybe inside of here, we want to store another array and I could call this name. And maybe we want to call this, um, actually, I'm not sure what the first one is. Let me go ahead and open up our home.blade.php. Actually, maybe that was in, where did we store that at? We have home, oh, that's right, in main.blade.php. Okay, so we have bars. I'm gonna take a look at zero one and see what I might want to name this. So this was just a blue bar. So maybe we'll call it blue dash purple. So if I go to bars, I'll just name this blue purple sky. <laughs> we'll give it that name. Um, and then we want to have the file. So the file is going to be located at theme bar zero one. And this way, if we ever change the name, we could then still reference each of them by their numbers. And then we could change the name and the location of where that specific bar is. And maybe I even want to add like location, or I guess that could be position. And I could name this one top. So that's going to be a bar at the top position. But again, this one could be, you know, configurable. So this could be at the top or the bottom. So maybe I want to say like, I don't know, I could say like full because it's going to be a full width bar. So maybe, yeah, we'll just call this um, floating actually. And then maybe the other one we can call that rectangle. And then we just know we kind of have to create you know, a convention that we know what these bars represent. So this is going to be floating. We also have zero two. And let's take a look at that one. So going back into our main, we'll say zero two. Do we not have that? Maybe I missed up something in the config. Yeah. So I need to only save this if it's formatted correctly. Okay, there we go. So this one is orange. So I could say orange dash, let's say, we'll call this orange. <laughs> we'll say pumpkin. That sounds good. Bars.02, and that's a floating bar as well. So we have two, three, four, five, six. So we know this is going to be three. That's three four, four, and then we have the sixth bar. And we know that the sixth bar is going to be a rectangle. 
So that's what I'm going to name this position. And see again, maybe position is the wrong name for that. We could always name this type. That might make a little bit more sense. Okay, so now I need to see what 003 looks like. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so main, say 03. Okay, and this was blue to pink. So we'll say blue, pink, rose. <laughs> I could change these names later. These are pretty bad. Blue, pink, rose. And that is floating. Now let's go with four. Okay, and four was black. So I'll just call this cool black. And I know that the fifth one was orange product hunt. And then we'll say Maybe we'll call this product hunt, I don't know, we'll just say bar. And this one, product hunt rectangle. Okay, Rec angle. <laughs> rectangle, there we go. Okay, so now we have that config set up. So now I should be able to reference any one of these bars. So we're just gonna pass in the specific bar and this is just going to be an integer that references the specific bar. So if we were to, we want to say get, we want to pass, and we'll just call this num. And this is going to go to the bar controller and the show method. Okay, so let's go ahead and just echo out a message here. Actually, let's echo out the specific bar. So if I were to go to slash bar slash 001, I get a 404 not found. Let's see, so we have bar. I think that's what I need to do. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now that prints out the bar. So now I should just be able to reference that config. So now I should just be able to say echo so echo did the bar, so 001. So I want to actually return the view. Actually, I'm gonna store, I'm gonna create a new view and this is gonna be the view that essentially loads all the Tailwind CSS that we need. And then it's also going to load the bar because let me show you if I were to load the specific view. So let me die and dump the bar. We get 001. So if I reference the config and we say bars dot and we reference that specific bar. Now we can get the file. So that's gonna be theme bars dot zero zero one. So now I can essentially return. How about I just do that? return the bar and it is going to be file. So if I reload that, you're gonna see that we get the bar output, but it doesn't have any CSS that's loading with it. So we are gonna to need to create a bar template. So basically it, the bar will contain the HTML and then it will uh, include that specific bar. So let's do that now. So inside of the resources views, we have the bars. So I think just in the main section of the theme, I'm going to say new file and I'm going to call this bar. Actually, maybe I could just store this inside of the layouts folder. So layouts, we'll call this bar.blade.php. Okay. And we have HTML here. We'll say bar and I could always print out the specific bar name. And then I could include, and this is going to be the bar file. 
So we'll say bar file. And we also need to include the Tailwind CSS. And I'm actually just going to include the CDN for now, and we could possibly change that later. Most likely would want to change that later because the CDN link is going to be a pretty big file. So I'm going to look for Tailwind CSS CDN. And here we go. And let's get that latest version. So I'm going to copy that URL. I will say link. CSS, we want to include that link. Okay, so now inside of our bar controller, we actually want to return the view. We'll say theme layouts dot bar. And we want to pass the specific bar. So I'm going to say compact bar. And let's see if we get this on first try. Let's go back here, reload. And yeah, there we go. So there's our first bar. So now we can go to zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, and we get the point five and six. So that's pretty cool. We can show each of these bars and this is gonna be really cool because this is how we're gonna actually have like a showcase. So somebody can click on the bar or um, the pop-up showcase and then we can basically show all these to them. We probably will want each of these to animate, so maybe we want them to pop up. And that'll be another configuration setting that the users can configure, like if they want it to be delayed for maybe five seconds once the user arrives on the page, and then maybe it will show that pop up. And I just noticed I'm referring to them as pop ups. Um, so I could refer to them interchangeably as bars or pop ups. So now that we have that, maybe we also want to just create a route that we can go to that like say fancy bar .test slash bars and that's going to list out all the current bars just so that way we can preview them so back in our routes i can say route get bars and i want this to go to the bar controller and we'll just say the index so now we need to create the index method and I think in this one we could return view and we could say theme bars yeah we'll just go with that so now i need to create that view and i was just thinking that would be a cool extension if you could basically write this view and then you could right click and say create that view maybe it actually exists i don't know but that would be super cool so new file and then I say bars.blade.php. Fancy bars. And we may use this page for other people, but right now it's going to be kind of just for us to reference all the different bars that we have on the site. So how about we get all the bars from the config? We'll say bars. Okay, and then we're going to do a for each here. We're going to say for each bars as bar. And I could simply have an, a link to that specific bar. So this is going to be bar slash, and then I think that would be bar. So that would be the key for that specific bar. So I think that's array key. I may have to look up this uh, simple PHP function array key of that specific bar. I'm actually not even sure if that's going to do it. Test. Let me see if I just get an error. Okay. Array key. Yeah, so I'm getting an error there. And I actually should have debug turned on app debug to true so array keys i think that is and i'm still not sure if that i'm going to get that yeah so actually if i wanted to get the array keys yeah i think i would do that inside of here i'm not sure i may have to do some googling here we'll say bar 
and then bar, and let's see what we get here. Okay, yeah, so there we go. So now we can go to 0, 1, go back, 0, 2, 0, 3, and so on. And we may actually want these to trigger the actual animation that the user is going to see. So by default, maybe the first one pops down, the other one pops up. And I just noticed we have a trailing colon there. That's inside of the bar layout. And I think I always add a semicolon after, yeah, and include, which I don't, do not need to. Okay, so if I reload that, yeah, we don't see that anymore. So now we have bars, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so that's pretty good. We have uh, a way of looking at all the different bars that we have on our website, and then we're also going to be able to use this later on as the showcase. Um, I think one thing that I want to do um, is actually submit this to GitHub. I haven't even submitted my code to GitHub, and it's probably one of the things that you should have done first day, but you know that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new repo and then submit my project. And this is going to be a private repo. I've had a few people ask me like, hey, can you share it as open source? And especially since I'm using some of the elements from Tailwind UI, I know it's against their agreement to open source those designs. So for that reason and for the reason that I just kind of want to keep it as a private repo, if you really want to see the code base, um, you know, reach out to me and I'll see what I can do. Um, but again, you know, that could be against the license, so I may not be able to do that. So let's go ahead and go to github.com. And I'm going to say new repository and no template. And I'm going to name this fancy bar. Looks like I already have one created for that repo. So I'm going to put this under my dev dojo organization, fancy bar. This is the repo for the fancy bar website. I'm not sure what the other fancy bar was. Maybe that was some old thing that I was kind of playing around with when I bought the domain. So we'll just go ahead and stick it with the my organization. And I'm going to keep that as private. And I will just say create repo. OK, so now I'm going to init. Get init. I'm going to add all. I'm going to say get add all. And then I can just copy this. And the branch name is going to be main. And we're going to push the origin. Boom. And the final step. And now our code will be on GitHub. And uh, anytime we want to revert back to a change, we can do that. And it's also just good to keep it as a backup in case something happens with your local code base, you know that you have your code on GitHub. So if I reload this, then sure enough, we have our fancy bar repo. I can go ahead and add the site, I think, as well. Yeah, the website is going to be fancybar.io and save changes. Okay, so I've submitted my code to GitHub. We're good to go. I think uh, after every video, I'm going to just do a git push just so that way I have this documented. And maybe I could even document each, you know, like video, like episode. So I could tag it this with episode six or is that episode seven, I believe. Yeah, so I could say that this is going to be tagged. I could say create a new release and I could just call this tag version release title, I could call this episode, we'll say seven. And maybe I will tag this with a 0 0.7. And then we'll do 0 0.10, 0 0.20, 0 0.30. So as the episodes continue, then I will continue to add a new tag version. Version 0 0.7. Fancy bar project episode seven on YouTube. So I guess this is kind of cool too, because then anytime I want to reference uh, something specifically, if I want to look back at the specific release, um, I could then just go back to the video. So I could probably post the video link here after I finish posting it. So publish that release. That's good to go. Um, I think we're done with this video. Yeah, we got about three minutes left, but 
I think I'm going to end it there because that was a pretty good, um, it was pretty productive. We we're able to just create our section of bars that we can now reference anytime we want. We can click on the bars that we have there. Uh, we set up a config and that config has a list of all the different bars that we have created. We're going to be creating a ton more bars down the road because that is essentially going to be the key selling point is that people are going to want to add these fancy bars to their website. Um, so thanks for hanging out with me as we build a SaaS in 30 minutes each day. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you're getting something out of these videos. I know that I'm enjoying just creating them and it's kind of a nice break. I just break out of whatever I'm working on. I'm like, okay, I'm going to spend a half an hour on this project. And it's also nice because I don't have to, I know that I won't have to commit to too much. Like all I have to do is commit to 30 minutes a day. And I think most people can find 30 minutes out of their day to, you know, build something. Um, hopefully. So uh, I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow.